Okay, this is uh, section 5.1, page 260 in your textbooks. We're looking at exploring the equation of a line. We've done quite a bit of this already, so this should be uh, very familiar to you guys. Um, it's not necessarily new, but we are getting into a little bit more details. Um, the goal is to determine the significance of the values of m and b in the equation y equals mx plus b. So this is an equation we're all very familiar with at this point. It's the equation we know of a line. And we know that for several reasons. One, we know that the degree uh, we know is 1, which we know then that the, it forms a linear line. Okay. We also should know that m represents the slope and b represents the y-intercept. Okay, this is not new to us. So this is review. This is our y-intercept. And this value m here is our slope. All right. So what we're going to do, we have eight examples here. And the point of this lesson is to really just get you guys familiar with how your equation looks and what the graph looks like and be familiar with those two and how they correlate to each other. So we already saw a question like that um, in, in the last test in chapter three where you had a graph and you were going back to the equation. So you should already know how to do that um, because we're given the y-intercept in the, in the equation, or sorry, in the graph, and we're also given the slope in the graph, right? As long as th these values are numbered, okay? So, uh, we're just going to go over that and get a little bit more familiar with how the graph looks and then what the equation would look like. So the first example, <coughs> who can tell me what the slope would be? Obviously there's no numbers here. You can just give me an idea ge in general terms. The uh, rise over run. Yeah, good. So the slope is rise over run. So for example, for this this particular example, we know that's uniform for any slope, but for this particular example, can anybody tell me what a rough idea of the slope would be? Yeah, John. Um, one over three. Oh, I'm sorry, three over one. Three over one, okay, so very good. So one thing, the only thing I'm really kind of looking for is first of all, we, we know that the slope is positive. Okay, how do we know that? Because it's going up. Okay, that's how we know it's positive. And why does up signify positive? Well, because we're rising, we're moving up in a positive direction as we run in a positive direction. Okay? If we go down, your rise, of course, on the top is going to be negative because you're not rising. In that case, you're lowering. Okay? So we know it's positive for sure. And I like the fact that Josh says it's, it's a number three, so it's greater than one. How did you know that? I just guessed. Just guessed. Okay. I'm going to tell you, the reason why we know it's greater than one is because we can see that the line is rather steep. So we know that it's, it's rising faster than it's running. If that's the case, then we know the rise number has to be bigger than the run number. So that's why we know it's bigger than one. Okay, so that's a good number there. So description and picture. So we're gonna say that this is a steep line. Steep line rising. And the picture's over there, but it looks again like this. Okay, let me bother redrawing the picture. Okay, so possible values of slope. So three is definitely one, definitely. Any other values? Let's anything really take a guess. Yeah, four. Four, okay, yeah. And another guess, yeah, Matt? Two. Two, good. I'd say two is probably the closest. Uh, just looking at this because it's, it's rising about twice as fast as it's running. Okay, so in other words, it's going up two units for every one unit it goes over. Okay, we again are assuming that these axes have the same unit. So this is going uh, down by one, up by one, this is running across by one. If, for argument's sake, we all know we can do this, the y units were going up by 100, 100, 200, 300. And the x units are only going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You could argue that this has a slope of 200. Okay? Every one that I run, I go up 200. Okay? So you could even argue that you could say that the possible values here, the slope, is 200. Okay? Granted, or, or keeping in mind that your axis, these values would have to be different, right? The scale 
on your y-axis would then have to be 100 times that of your x-axis. Okay? Assuming, for the rest of these examples, let's assume that our scale is the same on the y and the x. Okay? So that will give us a better estimate or representation of these slope values. Any questions there? Alright. Uh, let's finish filling out possible values of y-intercept. Chris. Let's look at this. Where does it cross the y value? It crosses the y at um, 4. Yes, good. It's so right around 4. I would say 4. Uh, you might argue that it's actually 3.75. looks a little bit less than 4. Okay, and again, that's going to depend on the accuracy of your scale. Okay. Using that same argument, if your y scale is different, you might want to argue that this is, you know, 375 depending on whatever scale you choose for the y-axis. And possible equations. So McGill, what's a possible equation now? <clears throat> let's use our slope value, let's say is 2, and let's say our y-intercept is 4. What's a possible equation now? So y equals 2, uh, 2x plus 4. Excellent. That's it. Okay. So now we look at some, some graph like this, and I hope that in your minds now, things start to turn and you start to think about it, and all of a sudden, a picture like this, you start thinking of an equation like that. Okay, and that's the idea with this lesson, is that you can correlate those two. So now, when you have a picture like this, and like most of you guys on the test, or a lot of you guys, you had a negative value for the slope, right away you're gonna know, you're gonna know that's wrong. You're gonna be like, wait a minute, this is going up. Why do I have a negative slope? I must have mess, messed something up with my equation. Okay? Yeah. So you see how, how do you know if it's going up or down? If it's pointing up, it's going up. What if it... So like, always to the right. You're always moving to the right. Oh, okay. That's pointing up. And that would be pointing down. You're always moving in the positive x direction. Okay? Yeah. You might want to argue that this is also pointing up, but you're always moving to the right. Okay. Basically one. You can see it's a 45 degree angle. If it's a 45 degree angle, that means it's moving one over and it's moving one up. So I would only say the real possible value is one. Again, the only other case could be as if your, your uh, axes had different values, but we're going to assume that they're the same. Okay, keep going, Andrea. Um, possible values of walk ID intercept. Yeah, good. So using the same rough scale, of course, you could go like, you know, extremely high resolution and really use any number, but the idea is that you're getting a positive value because you can see it's positive there. And um, we're going to say, uh, for our purposes, let's say 2. Okay? So we're saying 1, 2. And now finally, under the equation y equals x plus 2. Great. Next one, Carlson's going to do, number three. Um, so the description is... It's um, a, sorry, let me just make a little adjustment here. Let me get that in the way. Us. Okay, go ahead. So the description is that it's gentle. Okay. Gentle. So gentle or uh, slight slope. Okay. Right? We made this move. Um, 2.5. Sure, 0.5, good. And so what this means then, now let's think about that. That means if our slope is 0.5 or 1 half, that means we're rising 1 for every 2 we run. So that seems about right for this, right? It's not going that high, but it's running further along. So we rise 1 for every 1, 2 that we run. Okay, that's where that box comes from. Rise 1, run 2. Okay, that's how we get the slope of 0.5 or a half. All right? So you could also say, you know, it's actually 1 third. You're running 3. If it was an even greater or less of a slope, 
like this, let's say, right? Not quite horizontal, but you know, getting pretty flat, it's very slight. In this case, even more so, this slope would say m is equal to 1 over 8, let's say. So now for 1 that we're rising, we're running 8 over to here, okay? So you guys see that, how the slope steepness, when it's less than 1, the closer we get to 0, the closer we're getting to horizontal. Okay, so the bigger the number, the steeper we get. The smaller the number, we get closer and closer to horizontal to zero. And then when we go negative, it goes negative. It's just like a scale like this, right? Okay, so very, very high slope. Four, three, two, one, exactly quarter, half, middle of that, one eighth, almost flat, zero, dead flat. Okay, Carlson, the equation now. Or sorry, the, the y-intercept? Um, three. Sure. Three. And the equation? Um, y equals 1 over 2 plus 2. You missed something. Oh, x. Yeah. Y equals 1 over 2 x plus 2. X. Very good. All right, so the fourth one. Talked about it, Michael. Oh, um, Horizontal, horizontal line. Good. Horizontal. Possible values of slope. Zero. The only value of slope wouldn't be possible in this case. It's the only value. Yeah. Y intercept to be around four. Yep. Good. And the equation. Uh, y equals four. Excellent. Okay. No slope. So in our equation, y equals mx plus b. We're going to put it here. Y equals mx plus b, the m is 0. So that x value, it doesn't matter, it's gone. So y is just your y-intercept value. That's your whole equation. All right, any questions there? All right, number five, Nicholas, read them. Um, it's a very steep. And, uh, okay, so steep. Is there any negative? Yeah, good, steep and negative. Okay, good. You told me my slope. So what's my possible slope value? Uh, negative one over two. Yeah, yeah, that works. Negative two. Maybe negative three could be. Negative a little more maybe. Negative three. Okay. Possible y value, y intercept values. Sure. Three times two. Okay, let's go with negative three and a y-intercept of three. What's our equation, Nicholas? Well, y equals negative three x plus three. Excellent. Okay, Kevin. Over here, Kevin. <coughs> Six. What's the description? 45 degree angle on negative. Good. 45 degrees negative. Possible values of the slope? Say what, 2? Negative 2? No, if it's 45 degrees. So you can see these two distances are the same, right? It's, it's lowering the same amount that it's running. So we know that our slope has to be negative 1 if it's 45 degrees. Possible values of that, uh, y intercept? 2. Sure. Yeah, 1, 2, that works. And the equation? y equals negative 1 x plus 2. Good. Don't have to show that one. You can just put x. Uh, next one here, David, number 7. Gentle negative. Possible values? Uh, could be maybe deeper slope. Negative half. Negative half, okay, good. Possible y intercept values? Maybe. Let's change this one actually. Let's 
make it more interesting. I'm not sure why the book has no negative y-intercept values, but so this would be the same, gentle, negative, negative a half, my y-intercept value? Um, negative four. Yeah, negative four, so. And the equation? And finally, last one, uh, Santos, number eight. What's my description? <coughs> Good, vertical line. Excellent. Possible values of slope? No, it's not zero, that's horizontal. In this case, it's undefined. Okay, so we don't, there is no slope. We don't know what it is. Don't know how to define that in mathematical terms. Uh, a one run over, an, an, sorry, a one rise over an unlimited amount of run, it's the same thing as one over zero. This is undefined in math, okay? So you cannot say it. Yeah? Could you partially build a line to find out how to define one over zero for the... Go for it. Go for it. Try to find it tonight. I'll give you a little logo price. <laughs> Could you find it? Yeah, basically all of mathematics breaks down if we try to try to assign a value to that. We can so why didn't anyone do mathematics? Sorry? Because zero is just so zero is nothing. People tried to define this as infinity. It's not infinity. Because they're saying uh, zero parts into one. It's an infinitely small part. It has to go into one, so there are infinitely little pieces would go into one. But if you do define it as infinite, it doesn't work. Zero. So many equations that you try, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's right. There's an error. All right, let's finish them off. So what's the y-intercept here? The y-intercept. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Does not cross the y-intercept, right? So y equals question. So y find. Wow. And the equation? Y equals y. Sorry? Y equals y equals y. Y equals question. Y equals what? Question. No. No. X equals infinity. X equals 5. Oh, y. Oh, x value is 5. Yeah, that makes sense. Good one, Matthew. All right, we'll stop the lesson there. We'll take up the questions here after lunch. All right, so the last thing we checked was the vertical line. We figured out that the slope was undefined. Uh, the y-intercept was undefined. The only value we did have was the x-intercept. So our formula then becomes x equals 5. Okay, there's a couple questions we want to answer. Question 1. How does slope value influence steepness and direction of the lines? And Noah's going to tell us succinctly what the answer to that question is. Um, the, the slope influence the, influences the, the steepness of the line because like, um, the higher it is, the steeper it will be. And the influence of the direction, everyone is positive or negative. So the greater value of m, which is the slope, the steeper it will be, okay? Okay, and the positive or negative determines direction. So slope up is positive. Up is positive and vice versa for negative. Question two. Carlson, talking to Jacob. Given the equation of line, how could you tell if the line was horizontal or vertical? Uh, if you draw the line, then you'll see it's horizontal or vertical. 
If you draw the line from the equation, so you're subbing in points. Okay, you could. There's an easier way, though. Just from the equation. It says given the equation. So how are you going to know? Josh. If the slope is zero, if it's horizontal, and if there's no slope or no line or sub, then it's vertical. Right. So y equals value. If this is any value, we know it's horizontal. And x equals just a value. Let's say, let's put in a value here just so we don't get confused. Putting that down so that we don't confuse that with another variable. 5 or 3, three or any constant. Constant is just another word for a number, no variable, or any constant. We get vertical. Okay, question number three. Ryan, in the linear relation, y equals mx plus b, how did the position and slope of the line change as m and b change? Because b is where you're supposed to start on the y-axis. Good. So b is y-intercept. Okay, and you're saying where you start, which is fine. Yeah, and? And then it shows how far you, how, how much you rise and how much you run. steeper slope and if we have m is greater than zero or less than one we get a very um, slight slope let's change to greater than one all right question for michael right there Given y equals mx plus b, how could you determine the line slope and y-intercept? Use an example in your explanation. What do you think, Michael? You're given this. It's kind of a repeat of question three, right? So what's the slope? I'll give you the example, okay, Michael? If I give you the example, y equals negative 3x minus 5, okay? So how can we determine the slope here? Putting points for x? No, we can just look at this. Okay, remember it's in the same format, Michael. Right? So they're similar. So what's the slope here? What's the slope in this equation? You gotta pay attention, okay? Because we've been doing this the whole lesson. Right, Santos, help him? No, in this case. This case, your slope. Oh, M. Okay. All right, Michael. Now, in this case, Michael, here, what's your slope? Um, the slope is negative 3. Good. Okay, now, Y intercept here is going to be equal to Marnier. Right here. This equation, what's the Y intercept? Oh, D. D. Thank you. And Janoshin, your y intercept for this equation. Negative 5. Sorry? Negative 5. Excellent. Okay, so you should be able to visualize what this slope look, what this equation looks like now. Right? Without having to do all that table of values that you have to do in elementary school, right away, this now in your brain should trigger a graph that looks like this. Negative 5. So you're going to go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cross instead, that's where we start from. That's our y intercept. Now, negative 3, that means we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, as we run 1, 1. So right away, you should be able to visualize a graph like that, okay? 
And I can find exact values here. Exact values. Not estimated values. Exactly. Because I know this value is 0, negative 5. And I know this value of x is 1. I know i got to go down 3. So I know this point down here is going to be 1, negative 8. I know that exactly, that point. I'm not guessing. It's not estimating. It's precise. Based on this equation, I can very quickly graph it accurately. Okay, any questions? Yeah. What does that say uh, for question 3? M is greater than 1 yeah. slope? Yeah, if it's greater than 1, it's a steeper slope. Oh. Oh. So it's a steep slope. This is 1, 45. That's greater than 1. And this is between 1 and 0. So this is m is greater than 1. This is m is equal to 1. And this is m is equal to 0 to 1. Between 0 and 1. Okay? Finally, summary. Y equals mx plus b is the equation of a line where m represents the slope of the line and b represents the y-intercept of the line. Okay, we've talked about that lots of times now. Where m is positive, the line rises to the right. When m is negative, the line lowers to the right. This is just review. We've learned this. This is m is positive. And this is m is negative. Horizontal line has a slope of 0. For example, y equals b. And the vertical line has an undefined slope. And x is a, where a is the x-intercept. Any questions with the lesson at all? Okay, that's the end of 5.1.